All right, so guys, the yeah, MSMEs, welcome, welcome. Uh, we'll make our first note or disclaimer. Also, we're going to see what's generated using some form of machine learning, which is a subset of AI. Welcome to the UCC BDCI's Guide to AI for INSMEs. Artificial intelligence, or AI, a technology that's rapidly shaping the future of businesses, especially micro, small, and medium enterprises, commonly known as INSMEs. Today, we'll explore how AI can revolutionize the way INSMEs operate, making them more efficient and competitive. AI is not just a buzzword. It's a powerful tool that can automate routine tasks, freeing up your valuable time to focus on strategic decision-making. Whether it's customer service, accounting, or inventory management, AI can handle it all with precision and speed. Let's talk about customer service. We all know how important it is to keep our customers happy. AI-powered chatbots and virtual assistants can interact with customers round the clock, answering their queries promptly and accurately, thereby improving customer satisfaction and loyalty. Now, let's move on to accounting. With AI, you can say goodbye to the tedious task of manual data entry and analysis. AI-powered accounting software can automate these tasks, reducing errors, and giving you real-time insights into your financial health. In the realm of inventory management, AI can be a game changer. AI can predict demand based on historical data, helping you maintain optimal stock levels and avoid overstocking or understocking. This can save you money and ensure that you're always ready to meet customer demand. In conclusion, AI can be a valuable ally for INSMEs, helping them streamline operations, enhance customer service, improve financial management, and optimize inventory levels. By embracing AI, INSMEs can stay ahead of the curve and thrive in the competitive business landscape. The future is here, and it's powered by AI. And that's the end of the presentation. I'm kidding. It's not that easy. It's never that easy. Uh, but this presentation was generated using tools that rely on AI. Uh, so the presenter as well as the text was generated. So I didn't want to change anything. So you can actually see they can get out. So the benefit of this is this this video took four to five minutes to generate. I can present. Now imagine you have 500 or 1,000 customers generate a customized video for each of them based on identifiers and information and things that you know they're really going to enjoy. So you can change the actual person, the background, the imagery, and the colors based on their political affiliations, for instance. So it's an example of using these tools to optimize what you do and increase customers feel very special. Right, so there's some stuff about me. Uh, I'm taking this presentation from the standpoint of I've used AI in my companies to optimize processes, profitability, find new customers, identify risks and gaps, and overall improve the company. And I've done this for corporate entities, startups, everything. So I want to present it in a very practical way to you. So we're going to go through a few examples. But before we do that, let's start with the basic. So what is artificial intelligence? So effectively, it's just a field that is focused on developing machines, robots that can reason, right? They, in some way, can make a decision based on data that you have. There are multitude of ways to do this, but they all rely on basically just mathematics, statistics, and physics. And all that is powered using so algorithms, extremely important. And that's it, it's not magic, pretty straightforward. But the reason you're seeing this amazing expansion of what it can do is because our computer processing power is so huge. And we have a lot of brilliant people that are working on it. So brief history, it has been around a very, very long time, very long, right? And treated, from the standpoint of it's just trying to create a machine that makes a decision. Right? That's a general area that we're looking at. Even GBT has been around quite a bit of time. So GBT 
to actually be more typical AI. And types of AI, we're not going to focus too much on, on uh, what's called reactive machines. So you do something and they react. To it. So they pretty much have it baked in how to interpret your action and then respond to it. A limited memory machine. So these are machines that use some past data to inform a decision. But it may not be that they can look back at you. Arrow AI, so ChatGPT, for instance. So these are tools that are generated, created for very specific use cases. So as awesome as ChatGPT is, and Bard and Lama and all these things are, they really just focus on text. But the benefit of all of that text being generated is they have general abstract understandings of other things, such as mathematics, social sciences, finance, program, and all these areas. So you can actually use these models to support your process. And general AI is pretty much, it's almost like a, so you can respond to many different types of stimuli. And if we actually get to that point, you wouldn't necessarily know that you're actually talking about it, which is something we're actually at a point of being right now. You can talk to them and not realize you're not talking. And super intelligence. So basically, I have an AI that can almost forecast the future with no levels of error. The theory of mind is more focused on the emotional component beliefs. That one's, that one's going to be a tough one. Okay, so how does AI learn? Because we're talking about creating a machine that learns. There are a few ways. Supervise, which is you just give it data and it learns from that data, understand the pattern. It's very data hungry. So all of the tools that you use where the voice recognition or image recognition, that supervised machine learning. Think of it like you, you give a task to somebody, you score them on the task, and then you tell them what they did wrong and what they did wrong. That's effectively what you supervise machine learning. Uh, logical, pretty much you're baking in all of the knowledge and instruction. Tell it exactly what it is. This is the lowest level. Reinforcement learning. So this is a cool one. The idea here is it's like trial and error. So imagine trying to teach a robot how to pack. What exactly? Can't exactly. So what you can do is you can a reward such that when it completes the action, it knows it's done something good. Then you just make it with enough times where it figures out how to do it. So reinforcement learning, that's really, really popular a couple of years back in being able to beat games and stuff. And unsupervised now. So unsupervised is basically you give it data and it tries to figure out something from it. Right? So you have some general baseline things, but it goes in and tries to say, oh, this is right, this is wrong. So unsupervised works really well for like fraud. Because a lot of times with fraud, you don't want to get caught. You're going to be trying to do weird things. And so it's based on this, you're going to try and pinpoint odd activity. All right, so AI, that's the field. So I call the AI onion. So I'll be very clear. So AI is the entire field of study. And then within that is machine learning. You get a lot of data and it learns from the data. And within machine learning, you have something called deep learning, which is an approach where you're very loosely developing models. You have an architecture like your brain, neurons in your brain. So you can treat it like these huge simultaneous equations that are connected to one another, and it's able to learn layer by layer. Now, within deep learning, these things we have with formula chat, T, stable diffusion, the journey. These are models that rely on deep learning to actually learn. Okay, so why does AI matter? All right? You've read about it on the news, you've seen this cool stuff, but what's the benefit? Big one is time saving. It's huge. So automation and AI are kind of cosmic on life. The idea is once you've figured out how to do something and then automate it, right? And when it comes to decision making, if you can figure out how to make an appropriate decision, you can just leave it and automate it to make it done. So it can save you a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of money. Revenue find out.
So you can use these systems to identify small things that you may be missing uh, with respect to a customer or gaps in your product or the market, and then you can target it. So if you look at, for instance, Amazon and what they're able to do, a lot of money in revenue or value in Amazon is coming from their recommendation systems. So these recommendation or recommender systems, what they do is they analyze your behavior and then they can figure out what you're probably going to buy almost before you consciously realize that you're going to actually buy it. And the benefit of that is less time for you. Uh, you reduce the time between transactions for them and they get a consistent revenue stream. They really get you because of your data and your behavior, and you can recommend things. So you ever put something in your cart and then it recommends, hey, maybe you'll probably like this as well. So maybe you buy a laptop and they recommend a mouse or they recommend an additional charger or a skin for the laptop, for instance. So they're providing you convenience in decision-making and they get rewarded for it with more revenue. And creative catalysts. So this is a huge one that we're seeing. So people are using large language models, which LLMs, ChatGPT, Bard, these types of models to help them figure things out. So it's effectively like having your own personal assistant or a second brain. So if you're struggling with that topic, you can ask it. So you could find a human being to do it, but you're gonna have to pay them per hour. That's a huge value for it, especially in the educational industry. Uh, so present some metrics here. So these are metrics based on actual carbon companies that I actually work with. The idea here is there are a lot of stats internationally, but the idea is you want to know what it's going to look like in your environment, in your market. Because Caribbean, Jamaica, different than the rest of the world, uh, not as advanced in terms of technical and data sharing and all these things. So what we've seen so far is revenue growth, 2.3x ROI coming from the value we put in versus the cost savings around 15% reduction. I have to keep a disclaimer here. This did not result in firing anyone. Very important, okay? We wouldn't call that. Uh, improved efficiency, operational efficiency, 20% and above. Uh, big values enhance customer, customer experience. So using these tools, you can become more efficient, spend more time understanding your customer, and have a very, very easy way to automate that engagement. So every business has customers. The more you can interact with them in a way that they like, more likely they are to actually spend money on you, and the less likely they are to churn. Uh, other benefits, predictive insights, so trend identification, risk prediction, forecast potentials, preemptive strategies. So, this goes back to the ideation component of it, very important. And then competitive edge, that's a huge thing. So if you're utilizing these tools, your data, which is a huge asset, can provide more value. So you're monetizing it on a more consistent basis. Uh, top use, uses that we've seen for AI in the Caribbean, ideation and innovation. So something as simple as writing a business plan, help to develop the entire product, automation, powered by artificial intelligence. Content creation is big as well. Uh, customer relationship management. So the idea there is you are supporting how you engage um, and delight your customers. And segmentation is a really big one. So on the segmentation, the idea here is you are using machine learning models to identify your core audiences, consumers and customers. Then based on that understanding, creating products and services and improving how you engage them. This results in increased revenue. And uh, basically those general four steps, how do you apply AI in the industry, whatever it is. Right. So you begin with the end in mind. So you start over here, end, and then you say, okay, how do I get to here? You need to know exactly what you're aiming for. So don't just apply AI just because the buzzword it's more than a buzzword, okay? And use, utilize it a lot of value, a lot of value of the data and customers. But what are you trying to achieve? That's the first thing you have to ask yourself. When you've done that, you say, okay, what types of tools do I need to get there? And I always say start small, think big, which is really important. So the idea here is you want to ensure that 
you're taking baby steps. You don't want to just automate everything in one go. You have an understanding of it. Because AI is not going to fully run your company and there are risks. Start with a proof of concept, proof of value project. Get some learning from that. And then expand out. Third is leveraging AI tools, right? So once you've done it using chat GPT as a pilot to get to something more secure enterprise-wide. So Google, for instance, has a lot of tools. AWS has a lot of tools they can tap into. And most of these actually connect directly to other tools that platform is right on. One issue is found is with legacy systems. So when you have legacy systems, there may be limitations with that system connecting external sources. So that may be a big um, roadblock. For you. But if you have an issue with respect to that, you can have to migrate over. And finally, elevate your team. So you need your team members familiar with these tools, utilizing these tools and understanding them. Uh, they don't have to be experts, right? But you need to get how to use them effectively. So I think Microsoft Excel, for instance, and code in Microsoft Excel, you can, all, you can make games in Microsoft Excel. So everyone needs a general understanding of what it is to utilize it effectively in an organization. All right, let's get to some myths. All right, it's too expensive. Not anymore. Not anymore. So the time my team would take building a model a year ago is a fraction of the cost of what we take today. And that's the open source and innovation and development across the board. It's too complicated. Um, I'm a bit biased. I am a researcher in the space, science and disease. But the tools are being made to be user-friendly. So a complicated component is something nobody wants to present to you. So what you'll find is a lot of these tools, drag and drop diagrams, very easy to get from A to B, to spend some time on them. Uh, it will replace all human jobs with all there. So this is definitely up to debate. There are issues, or in a sense, is materializing in some industries currently. But the recommendation I always put forward is you can augment, but you don't want to fully replace any roles as yet, or any roles that are core to your business. That's very important. It's a core role. You don't want to fully automate it because there are risks involved. These tools are amazing. It's awesome and stuff like that, but they're still just tools. They're very stupid or narrow or limited or whatever you may call it. So you still need a human being involved in the process. Because when the hit hits the fan, that's when you're going to wish you had a human involved. So you can use it to optimize. You can become a cyborg and change your capability and your productivity. But it's not at a stage where, where you can automate uh, your core roles in your organization. Right? At some point, probably, right? certain industries are going to be heavily impacted, certain jobs are going to be heavily impacted. There's no doubt about that. Um, but that is not to focus on the fear of that. It's actually to upset their workers from now. Because one thing AI cannot do as well as humans is create an AI. It seems like it's doing it better than us, but it's not. It's actually just pulling from a lot of human knowledge to imitate what we can. All right, in action. So now what I wanted to do was spend like a couple of minutes and come up with pretty much a new product just to present different ways that you can use these tools. Right, so, start with innovation. So this is based on ChatGPT and DALI 3. So all I said to it was, oh, give me an idea of a, a, a product. That was effectively it, right? And it came up with eco charge, portable device charge, or powered entirely by the river energy resources, solar panels, wind turbine, kinetic energy converter. I uh, provide the features, the target market, the benefits. And I haven't tweaked anything here. I want to present exactly what you get out of the systems. Then I asked for a logo, and it gave me this logo. So maybe it's busy, maybe it's not. I don't mind. I think it looks good. Uh, so, idea here is this this took seconds. Um, this is what you call one shot, um, sorry, zero shot. 
So the idea here is I didn't give it any idea of what type of product. Um, one shot or few shot refers to when you give the AI model more information. So I, I could say to it, for instance, I'm in the Jamaican market, less than 3 million persons, I can target, I have X number of dollars available, hot every day, energy prices are high, something like that. Right? That would be providing more context and it will provide a better outcome. But this is okay so far. Uh, let me take some questions and go at a midway point. Do you have any questions so far? Okay. Okay. All right. Now let's get into marketing. So this is a huge, huge, huge benefit here in terms of marketing. If you do it properly, that's very important. Because you can just you can spam people thousands of messages, uh, but you still need to do some form of refinement and understand of your target audience to get the best of it. So, said all right, generate some marketing copy. Came up with this. Uh, it's like chargers and solar panels and wind turbines. I came out with the tagline, revolutionize your charge. Then this one, empower your for every, every moment. So it came up with like 15, so I just picked the top two. The idea here is your marketing team use this to brainstorm ideas very quickly and then push it out. So you'd still use a graphic designer, but this can help you communicate better with a graphic designer. So instead of going to them and saying, oh, you know, I'm really not sure what's going on. I don't know exactly what I want. You can type what you're thinking and it'll give you out some ideas. Take the graphic designer and they'll improve optimize or create something for people. So in this case, it had a lot of wind turbines and solar panels. I could put more insight or more inputs into it to get more out of it. Uh, from an operational standpoint, uh, I just said to you, all right, operationally, I need to build this company. What am I going to do? So Gave me four objectives, product development, market penetration, distribution and sales, customer support, and some KPIs. So it's very important though that it doesn't have context. It has no context on the market I'm operating in. So these numbers it's throwing out, can't just take it um, at face value. You're gonna have to get with your team and really understand that change. But it's giving you an initial baseline of what you can work the inspiration and understanding of this. Other operational benefit is related to the automation piece of it. Certain things can be automated, uh, but automation in this case is necessarily yeah, it's just automation. So what you'll actually find now is MailChimp, LinkedIn, all the social media platforms, uh, the financial platforms as well, automation involved in there that can improve your overall efficiency. Our sales. EcoCharge powers your devices with renewable energy. Our revolutionary portable device charger combines solar panels, a mini wind turbine, and a kinetic energy converter to harness the power of the environment. With its integrated battery and fast charging capabilities, you can charge your devices quickly in multiple conditions, from sunny days to windy nights knowing that it's powered entirely by clean sources of energy. At EcoCharge, we strive to make charging sustainable and environmentally friendly for everyone while empowering them to explore new places without worrying about their tech running out of juice. Our mission is to enable people everywhere easy access to clean energy sources that both protect our planet and meet their charging needs. Our vision is to create an eco-friendly revolution where all electronic systems are powered in harmony with nature's elements, sun, air, earth, saving us from relying on fossil fuels forever. That was a bit long. Uh, so the copy was generated using ChatGPT, and then it was put into a tool called Synthesia that does the AI generated videos. Benefit here is you can create an advertisement on the cheap and you can actually do a hundred different versions depending on who you're trying to target. It's got a QR code and a lead capture uh, form and you're, you're good. All right, 
So very important. AI needs us more than we need it. We want AI more than it wants us. That uh, basically what I'm trying to say here is we are relying on AI because it makes our life easier. But it's just a tool and it relies on our data to improve our opportunities. I got a question, a raise hand question. Go ahead. Well, I saw there is their hand for a brief moment. I'm not sure who it was. Okay. Okay. I'll keep going. Yeah. So, yeah, I can help you improve your innovation and ask us some experience, improve risk management, scale at reduced cost, and optimize operational efficiency. So, I work with many companies that have utilized different tools, custom made as well as off the shelf. In every case, there has been benefit. And the reason for that is the cost is so low versus the potential value. So you're very likely to get benefit from that. All right, so the risk. So there's always risk, any technology, and uh, the types of machinery that, that are being presented to you are relatively new. The methodologies are pretty new as well. First thing is protect your data. So your data is the, is the gold mine. Your data is the core of value because they use that data to fuel these models to be able to do what they're doing. So if you're using an AI system that's free, you're paying for it with your data. Effectively. Right? So it's very important to understand that. You're working for them for free because every time you use it, you're making it get smarter. You're potentially giving it insights that it can use for the actual owners of the system to optimize and get better. Subject matter expertise, still the key, very important. So as much as these tools sound extremely intelligent, remember, they have no real context of the real world. They have an abstract understanding, but they did not go through anything. We are getting that from text and numeric data. And there can be things lost in translation. So it's always important to speak with an expert or get an expert on it. For instance, uh, the issue that happened a couple months ago with a lawyer that just put some stuff in charge and it wrote his case or whatever, just made up stuff. An expert should have vetted and reviewed things. Ask it sometimes where is where is the capital of Jamaica? It sometimes says Mobay. Why? Because it's pulling from data from tourists incorrectly have Mobay as a capital. Okay? So you have to be aware that it's not fully hundred percent accurate. So research is something you have to be very careful. Don't use it for research. Right? Uh, you need to use a more reliable source for research because Small zone have a lot of access to Jamaican and American data. That's a huge risk that you're gonna, that you're gonna tap into. Um, always have secondary resources. Always ask it for where it got the data at source, because a lot of times it's gonna hallucinate. So I think the term hallucination is really great marketing. It makes it sound less crazy than it is. But effectively, it's just making stuff up, right? And that can cause you huge problems when it comes to uh, presenting things to your clients, developing strategies. And AI is just a tool, okay? For your calculator, obviously way more advanced, but it's a tool. Use tools when they're necessary and appropriate for a problem. That's why I would say AI is just a tool. Not every problem, you should throw AI at. It's not necessarily a super person problem. All right, so, we have time. I had a final type session here. I wanted us to kind of work together to make our company. Um, but we can take some questions from now. Or is it just a tool or will it become far more advanced? And just... um, well, it is just a tool. It's just an advanced tool. Uh, but Trying to get to is it gonna take over the world, for instance? Is that what you mean by that? Uh, in that case, it just be a really effective tool. Yeah. 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 
And okay, the if, you, if you have any more questions, you can raise your hand or you can type it in the chat. I okay, guess so. This speaks to the concern people have in regards to, or yeah, I'm gonna take over the world, all that um, mining stuff. So a lot of people saying that stuff. Science fiction is usually that. Science fiction usually yeah, it takes over the world. I don't know about it. Uh, is it gonna take over the world? Uh, I don't believe so. But humans can use it to take over the world. That's something important. Uh, for an all-knowing AI to get all-knowing, it requires us as humans to access every single thing, right? And allow it to make decisions on our behalf. That's important. What it's currently being used for, for instance, the political space globally is uh, these tools are used to more uh, effectively manipulate audiences because it can do it at a very, very fast and large scale. That's a bad part. So you can you can make scammers more efficiently, more efficient utilizing these tools. Yes, Simone. All Henry. right. So we have a question here from an anonymous attendee. They ask, "Is it that startup AI helps prompts AI on businesses' behalf?" Uh, startup helps prompts. Prompts AI on businesses' behalf. You mean right prompts? Well. I'm make sure I fully interpret. So we we develop customized models, AI models, but we also test tools and teach people how to utilize the tools. There's, there's a lot of them out there. I'm not sure if that's what you ask. All right, uh, um, as attendee, if, if you can clarify that question, then that would be good. All right, so we have a question here from Gordon. He or she asks, what are the principal steps a manager can take to prepare his or her team for the incorporation of AI in their company's operations? Yeah, great question. So the first thing is dialogue, start a conversation. Second is get them to utilize the tools um, on a recreational basis, right? get familiar with them. And uh, the dialogue component I, I bring up because there are a few things that always get either stated or it's just like, it just pops people in the head. This is gonna steal my job, right? It's gonna take over the world and make us all redundant. And then is it gonna harm us? Right? So it's important to have those conversations. But start them off with Google Bard because it's free. It's connected to Google, uh, and it has a lot of functionality. We have some tasks to, uh, do. things that they would do that things that are adjacent to what they do on a daily basis. So start them there. Uh, but the main thing is you need to identify your issues and your gaps and where you're trying to go and optimize. And then from that you can figure out the exact so These tools are way easier to utilize than others are probably familiar with. Just getting past that gap of unnecessary to the company. A lot of studies have done show that not many people actually utilize the tools. Right? Um, there's a lot of untapped value that they need access to. All right, so Simon Morrison, you had your hand up a few times, so you're allowed to talk. If you want to unmute and ask a question, you can go ahead. That um he actually answered me already. Thank you. I'm sorry. It was a. Uh, uh, I just want to make sure it actually suited what you're asking. Yeah, man. It, I was the person who okay. um sent out the the question about the advance, but so you got you. Okay. Did it. Uh, do we have enough time, moderator? Yes, we do. We actually have a lot more time. Okay, wonderful. All right. Um, so if no questions, this part I'm gonna need a lot of feedback from the audience. Okay. I want us to come up with a new company effect. All right. So uh try and type it in the comments. Comments. I right, know. Just give me some ideas of some companies or company ideas, some abstract as you. 
and just type in when you're ready. Uh, question. All right, while you're typing, a fax it. Okay. We Is have two more questions here. We have one from our very own Errol Campbell. Are there any drafting AI software that is able to draw a model of a building or a mechanical component? Yes. So AutoCAD, uh, we're coming out with effectively, everybody's using GPT. It's not necessarily GPT, but um, generative AI tools to support doing that. Um, type in GPT CAD or something, it should pop up. Uh, it's not 100%, I'll say that. But the idea is it's, it's trained on schematics and diagrams and drawings. And then and I type stuff in and it should be able to create like a generic free model that you can then push into AutoCAD. So for instance, let me go back up to this one. Outside. So as basic as this is, you could have put this into the software and it would then try and figure out the dimensions. And connection. Uh, I'll say another question. Oh, yes, so it's from an anonymous attendee. They asked, would you consider the potential development of AI in certain business consultor services, i.e., the use of AI to create a business plan or write up financials as an issue for the for the people that work in that sector? Um a drive. So for instance, there are there are AI tools that help you use other AI tools. Um and uh, data science, there are AI tools that analyze data, right? But from a data science perspective, that area of the company, we're not really concerned about that. That to us is actually a drive to improve. Because if you're doing something that can be easily reproduced by this tool, then you just have to step up your game under something that you kind of got this point. Um, there's a reason that strategic consultants, business consultants still have, they're still there. They still retain revenue and big bucks on all these things. Because they're in a sense doing something that's kind of difficult to just reproduce on the right? So in that case, with the business plans or finances, and in many cases, like for an accountant, yeah, you can auto generate your accounts, but I still use a human being and I tell them how to do um, Marketing copy, all of these things that we utilize AI for, you have you still have a human being betting, that makes it sure that it's done appropriately. It's just because you can do something quick doesn't mean it's going to be as effective as. I was naming that air drafted software. Uh, Google GPT CAD. I don't remember the exact name, but Google GPT CAD is something that should pop up. Uh, free online courses, manager can use to prepare his or her team for AI, science, and introduction material. Yes, so many. Um, Coursera, LinkedIn, let me have some free courses. Um, Google. Google has free generative AI courses. We have more than 15 that you can tap into. Uh, deep learning that AI as well. Uh, but I would say before you start doing the courses, just be very clear on what you're trying to accomplish. Because you could end up in a course rabbit hole. You're getting all, you're getting some great feedback information, but it's not necessary per se for what exactly you're trying to achieve. Um, Anything reach out to UCC, CI, and they can support you as well. Some resources that will save you time as well. Uh, sponsor as well. Uh, I'm seeing um, a few recommendations here for the for the company. Yeah, there are a few here. So switch over so you can see my screen. Uh, I just start. So effectively, what I'm going to do is what's that? No, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, so if I go this, I'm going to share my screen, and we'll just pretty much go through. Won't do anything too complicated. 
just want to make sure that everything is visible. And that you can hear. All right, so this is ChatGPT. Is the screen visible? Yeah. Yeah, we can see our screen. All right, so let's start with the uh, let's create a new product. On the following ideas. All right, so there were taxi. What else? So there's a taxi company, an online yeah. store, a right. hotel chain, hotel chain, and a company that offers virtual event planning and hosting services. And hosting services. All right, cool. All right, so create a new product, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to put me an expert. Let's see what we get. The combining virtual stay, virtual destination experience platform, digital platform offering immersive virtual travel experiences. Virtual hotel rooms from famous chains, attend global events, home, uh, virtual taxi tours, online local store integrations, virtual event planning, and then going to have a virtual business model, freemium, basic virtual experience, and then affiliate marketing, sales sponsorship, life integration. Purchase it. So you popped out all that stuff, but is that really going to work in the market? Uh, so you have to use it. Uh, are we okay with this, or do you want to try something else? So, um, yeah. So, but, uh, uh, Chat GBT, yeah, it's free. Uh, but to get access to additional services, you have to pay is like twenty or something. Uh, export agro process. Uh, so, yeah. uh, Alright, all right. We want to do this, or do we want to do the recommendations for export agro process? Yeah, vote. I'll take um export agro processing products for one hundred, please. <laughs> ding dong ding. All right, so go back here. So generate a product is on, and then I'm gonna put again be an expert in uh, our development. In this case, I don't want to do like a zero shot. I want to give it some more context. So is this product going to be in Jamaica? So the products are local and they'll be export to they they're going to be exported to like US and Canada. Jamaican products exported to US. Uh, and disclaimer again. So. These models were not built on a lot of data about the Caribbean and US, primarily like UK, US data, Chinese data. So for research purposes, for metrics, it's very aware about utilizing for our local models. They say something very confidently, but have no support for it. Okay. That's a local Jamaican products. Um, any specific product in mind you're looking at? Well, export item, perishables, well, agro, like cassava, coffee, um, any idea? 
like uh, jerk seasoning, sauces, and other condiments. So I wanted to provide products. Um, I asked for a catchy name. Don't be racist or racist. And a tagline. Okay. There's your seasoning, da, da, da. jam flavor, essence, taste the heart, eat to Jamaica, uh, classic jerk essence, marinated meats, island fire hot sauce, tropical marinade fusion, reggae rum barbecue glaze, golden sunset mango chutney. Oh, they're giving me uh, the ingredient list as well. Nice. Patriots in the US and Canada on this secondary restaurants. Selling proposition, Jamaican taste, 100% natural, versatile product. Launch strategy, sampling events, collaboration with restaurants, online marketing, regional partnerships. I got to put feedback and iteration in there. Yep, for sure. Yeah, so obviously this isn't going to like come up with an amazing product for you, right? but it's going to help you with the baseline. And then you go in. So that is, it could probably get you like 60, 70% of the way there. And your 30, 40% is new. Like jam no. flavor is What was that, someone? No, you're saying that, but that's a good start. That's a good start for any business. Right. So just to add, it, add to it, because uh, effectively what's going to happen now is the more people use the tool, the more people are going to be used to the output. So the less it's going to be useful to stand out, it's going to be enough to just provide a passing score for things. So you're going to have to, again, improve the quality. Right? For generic stuff, where it doesn't really matter, so uh, maybe it's a deadline and you need some product details to some of the like This will probably help you get it done there. Yeah. And I'm gonna take all of this and uh, let's get into the visual aspect now. So I'm gonna take all the product concepts and I'm gonna go back here to a new chart. But down here to Dali 3. So Dali 3 is the Image generation. So I want to say create a mock-up for uh, the products described. Oh. Uh, the innovate. Uh, hyper realistic. Uh, Stop it in. So this is good mockups, very good if you like presenting visuals or you're presenting somebody who's very keen on visuals. Uh, so instead of finding a developer just to do like a generic mockup, instead, so that we save money in the long run on developers or graphic designers or user, user interface developers. So just going through much the description of the text trying to understand as much as possible what you would want out of it. And I'm going to provide some examples. So what's in here is trying to get context. Okay. So it takes the input data, tries to get context, and tries to export something that you like. Uh, yes, I would like to proceed. Uh, 
particular time. So DALI is called a diffusion model. Um, so it's a generative AI model that generates images. Uh, ChatGPT um, is a model that generates text, a large language model, so just for stating purposes. So in this case, they're working together. So a little bit of time, I'll see what it goes. All right, so it's good, I like this. And the big thing with Dali, Dali 3 now is it does well with text. So you can see the text is actually really good with that. I like this. What do you think? So a little misspelling here, but on here, but by the background, the pepper, it doesn't do well again, the context of the peppers and stuff. So trying to give you like a scotch bone. And uh, it's Arabic of Jamaica, classic jerk marinade. Very looking chicken right there. I don't know this case. Anyway, yeah, so you can see, you can very effectively present your idea using these tools. Like Jamaican flag, you see some issues right there. So. But it's a starting point. All right. Uh, I think that's my time right there. So, questions? Yes, I have a question. When I enter my data in that, even if, if I don't update it, let's say I'm using it. Um, for script purposes, the they company now owns that data and will now reuse that data with other people, correct? Uh, so that's what I mentioned about the data components. So OpenAI says they will not use your data to train the model. It may depend on the subscription. So if you have a free subscription, it may potentially use the data. In terms of who owns it, that's the big issue that we're having right now. Um, that's where they're getting sued a lot. All of these models are being sued by a lot of content creators or artists, writers, developers. Um, so the rule of thumb is do not put in any sensitive information in these tools, right? Unless you have an enterprise package for the tool and it's been verified and agreed upon by the company that the data will not be used. So like for ChatGPT enterprise version, Everything's segmented off. So your data is supposed to be separate from other people's. You're not supposed to use your data to train it. Uh, for the free version, it's, yeah, it's probably going in there to, to train and, and improve the model. I wish I could give you a more concrete answer, but you technically don't really know what it's going to do. Yeah. All right. Any questions? Use these tools as quickly as possible. Uh, get your kids involved in using the tools. That's my big recommendation right now. And uh, with a quote that someone said, it's not AI that's going to replace you, it's somebody using AI that's going to replace you. All right, everybody. Hi, Adrian. Um, what was the name of the AI that you used to create the video again? Oh, thanks. Yeah, I'll forget that. So the video is called, you know what it's called? Synthesia. Synthesia. Can you put it in the chat, please? Synthesia, uh, is it? Yeah, So everything generated today was Synthesia, 
chat GPT. Yeah, yeah. I don't think, yeah, I didn't bother using Bard or anything. All right, so thank you so much for coming on and presenting for us. And I am sure that a lot of persons learned a lot. I'm still training my chat GPT. <laughs> <laughs> so, but wait, why did you tell it not to be racist? That's my question for you. <laughs> uh, experience. So, uh, when it hears Jamaica and jerk, it just gets very oh. generic. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. I said generic, but and he put in very extreme things in there. He'll put in more about so generic. No problem. All right. Thanks for presenting. And if there are no more questions, thank you all for joining us. Yeah, awesome. Everyone, have a good day.